what's up guys so today I'm gonna do my review on my 2017 SV650 I've had it for just about two months now I've done a thousand well just over probably around 11 or 1200 kilometers on it so about 700 miles and yeah it just got broken in so now I can start doing wide open throttle runs all that good stuff and that's why I waited till now to give you guys the review so that you guys can get the the full uh, well so I can get the full experience and I can give you a better review so what do I want to say handling handling is really good the bike handles uh, amazing it goes into turns really well it's weighted really well you can throw it around uh, the only thing I would want is stiffer suspension in the front it's non-adjustable as you can see in the owner's manual it shows me that there should be some adjustment here but that is not the case so Suzuki step up your game uh, don't be giving out owner's manuals with features that don't come on the bike standard or at least mention it foot peg position is pretty good I have to say I like the foot peg position I have not used these yet I've been trying but I haven't had any uh, turns that I've been able to lean in far enough on so I'll let you know about that I'll update you guys but power wise it's got lots of power I like that the gears are pretty long as compared to my 250 uh, I had a CBR 250R and the gears are a lot longer on this you can do 30 comfortably 40 comfortably on first gear second gear will take you to 110 if you're stretching it all the way to redline so you definitely have a lot of room to play when you're riding around in the city you do not have to worry about uh, shifting too much it's not a, not a pain in the ass so I enjoy that the only mods I've done so far is the tail eliminator or the tail tidy and or the fender eliminator sorry and this is the Yoshimura it looks pretty good I like it it's got an LED light in there cleans it up pretty well I think it looks pretty damn nice uh, what else the exhaust isn't very loud stock it needs to be upgraded but let's go ride it and uh, we'll, I'll tell you some more starting it once it's warm starts up nice you only have to touch the button once maneuverability you can do a nice tight circle and see that's second gear I'm only at 4900 rpms sits there pretty good like you can ride around all day long in the city and not have to go through the gears not be worried about clutching all day long riding it through these little streets back here is really nice because you can just whip it around the bike goes left or right or wherever you want it to very easily and you saw there was even a little bit of loose dirt back there the tires slid a bit that was my next point that I was gonna make is the tires that it comes with from the factory are all right they're not the best they're not the worst uh, you definitely don't want to push the bike to its limit on these tires because they're not the, the stickiest but they'll definitely get you by if, uh, if you're planning on buying it new you can definitely ride a season or two and you don't have to worry about changing the tires just uh, like I said don't go too crazy don't be dragging knee on turns and shit like that <laughs> but other than that no they're awesome I haven't had any issues I haven't had any tire chatter uh, I haven't had any kind of locking up or anything like that uh, even when I do press the brake really hard in the back it uh, stays pretty well and the ABS only activates in the front I read in the owner's manual the ABS does not activate in the back so you can still have the tire lock up and have tire chatter so you got to be careful of that when your tires are cold the mirrors are set up really well I honestly have no issue with the mirrors once you set them up in here and you move this little rubber uh, protector up 
there's a couple of bolts there you adjust them and they're great because if you don't adjust them then you can't see anything and make sure you adjust them really tight because there's no windshield on this bike which you can obviously tell you're gonna have a lot of wind hitting you but anything over about 110 120 kilometers an hour on a windy day and the mirrors actually close so I have them tight enough now that I can drive on the highway and they're not gonna close but when I first had the bike for the first week or two they kept closing on me and it was a real pain I just didn't know uh, didn't know what the hell I was doing and eventually I got them tight enough so yeah that's a good tip for you guys under here there's a adjustment throttle response is great shifting is very smooth the gears want to just drop in as soon as you press the clutch if you preload the shifter you barely have to give it any effort it just drops right in uh, yeah the wind you can probably hear a little bit of wind noise coming into the mic right now uh, it's windy but it's not that bad compared to riding my sports bike the 250R you don't get very much more wind because that doesn't have much of a windshield either and if you tuck down uh, if you duck down or tuck in like so you guys probably can't see very well right now because of my camera angle but your helmet becomes a very good windshield and you streamline with the motorcycle and you honestly don't don't feel the need for a windshield when you do that I don't at least I've been riding it on the highway I've been riding it in uh, crazy windy days we had a couple of windstorms up here and I rode it in the windstorm and it's fine there's no fairings on it so the bike doesn't really catch the wind so it's not being pushed left or right when the wind hits it it's more of just you getting wind on you and being able to stay on the bike and uh, not have it throw you off balance but I think that a windshield is only necessary if you're doing a lot of highway or if you're doing touring but for city riding and for a bit of highway here and there maybe uh, you know 50 kilometers here and there you're fine you don't need a windshield and for people who want to buy this as a first bike uh, I think it's a great first bike uh, it would honestly not be a bad choice because once you ride a 250 for a bit you do want to have something that has a little bit more power a little bit more uh, I don't know how to say it, just the rideability because the 250 you're stretching the gears and you're you have to get all the little power that it has to, to make it safe sometimes to get around traffic but with this there's no worries you can ride it on the highway you can ride it in the city and you actually you have confidence it's a very confidence inspiring bike so if you're looking to get this as a first bike I'd recommend it it's very comfortable the seating position is great I'm 6'1 and I have no problem I can ride this thing all day long uh, the p peg position for a tall guy like me it's perfectly fine you don't get any uh, kind of weird angles on your leg or any weird angles in your foot when you're trying to shift everything flows as it should uh, yeah overall I'd say it's a great bike so it's, uh, it's pretty good on gas too it does about 250 kilometers to a tank it takes about $17 to fill up the tank when it's empty that's on premium fuel at $1.50 a liter uh, and yeah I think that about covers it if there's anything that I missed or anything you guys want to know definitely drop me a comment and I'll be happy to reply back to you guys or put it in my next video but until next time ride safe out there and peace